ABC. You know, it's as simple as ABC. You knew this. Well, we use this expression when we're trying to take something that is complicated and make it more understandable. I like to teach, so I'm always looking for different ways to explain things. In my quest to become a better physician in teaching within that realm, I'm convinced there are three critical skills we ought to practice to get better and look for other ways to practice them. That's attention to, that, that's focusing, attention to uh, expanding our thinking and attention to details. So focus, expanding our thinking and attention to details. Uh, simple, complicated, or, or both, okay? By focus, I mean really zeroing in on that patient encounter, making sure you're present. By expanding your thinking, of course, the easiest concept is to think of expanding the number of diagnoses you're considering, but also considering the patient perspective and expanding your thinking to consider the perspective of other experts, especially if they're in the medical literature um, and, and experts in their area. And, I, and by noticing details, it should be fairly obvious, but the key issue is that you don't always see what's important at first. So focus, ex expanding your thinking and noticing details. This sort of structure becomes especially important when we're feeling under pressure. For example, in my life, the daily pressure when I'm running behind to, to hurry up to get to the next patient, but knowing I need to slow down so I don't do that. So do me a favor for a minute. Uh, bring your hands together. Just one clap will do fine. Oh, well done, you guys are on it. Okay, spread your hands apart. Okay, take a look at your palms and your nails. You can take as long as you want on that because I'll explain to you what we did. We all focused together. Uh, this is hopefully to help you mem remember that concept. Expanding your hands is of, is of course an analogy for expanding your thinking, um, but maybe you actually felt something different in that moment. Maybe you notice something different around the room because you focused for a second. And certainly looking at the lines on your palms or the details on your nails, you, you were appreciating this idea of picking something up that maybe you hadn't noticed before. Now, I'm going to share with you uh, my mnemonic that I've used in teaching and in life over a number of years um, using ABC uh, that helps me practice the same skills while also having some fun and enjoyment and relaxation. It's ABC, using art, bird watching, and cooking to enhance your visual and sensory skills in medicine. So it's gonna be pretty easy to be honest with you. I'll show you some art, I'll show you, show you some birds, I'll show you some cooking, I'll show you some clinical cases, and hopefully we'll have a little bit of fun with this because fun is the key and we'll relax. And I, I think you'll get the point. It turns out I really love my job. I feel really lucky. Um, so anything I can do to help others love theirs more seems to make some sense to me. Plus, I'm gonna tell you a secret. And, and I've brought, invited some friends here tonight who are not clinicians. Even if you're not a clinician, focusing on details may actually help you save a life someday. You can save a life. So my day job, it's a C, cutaneous diseases. Dermatology, okay, I'll give you, it's a D. It's a visual oriented area of medicine, but also involves listening, sometimes smelling and touching. So how do we focus? Now, one of my mentors told me that the very first thing you need to do is, is hit the reset button before you move into a patient room. It's important to, to zero in, see each patient as an individual. And just like art that we're going to discuss, every piece of art starts as an empty space or an empty canvas. Now, how many people have been to Florence, Italy? Let's travel together for a minute. All right, quite a few lucky people. But if you haven't been there, that's okay. Florence is filled with art and culture and great food and everyone should look forward to going there. But if you haven't seen the art we're gonna to discuss today in person, that's okay because you've almost all seen it as a photograph or in a reproduction. This is Michelangelo's famous David sculpture. And David it depicts uh, the David of David and Goliath, uh, that particular story. David sits at the end of a, a hallway and, and you walk in the room and you turn to your right and you look down the hallway. And what you see is this incredible piece 
of granite uh, from a distance. And you focus on that object. And as you walk toward it, as you walk toward it, you expand your thinking to appreciate different views. And, and you marvel at the fact that this started off as one piece of flawed granite. He worked around the imperfections. Incredible. And you get closer and you see further detail. At the very least, you understand the difference of looking from a distance and getting close to see details, at the very least. But we also understand that if we move our perspective, we see certain details and we fail to see those if we don't move. Well, of course, we can discuss medical issues. Uh, you know, so, so David, David from a distance, you're wearing sunscreen. As I get closer, I want to know, maybe I'm going to find a skin cancer. He's certainly dressed for a total body skin exam. Maybe some eczema, psoriasis, other problems. But as I get closer still, maybe I have a good enough relationship uh, with David to expand my thinking, consider details that might be critically important. Like, David, should we be talking about consent and contraception and sexually transmitted infections? Okay, that's it. I, I, I've got to be humble uh, because I'm not really an art expert or a historian. I, I'm just taking one piece of art and we could discuss almost any and thinking about practicing these skills of focus, expanding my thinking, and attention to detail. Truth is, uh, and I'm sure I fail occasionally, uh, this is what I try to do with every single patient. So as a dermatologist, people often show me their hands. I'm, I'm gonna focus on the patient. I'm gonna expand my thinking. I'm gonna consider details. In this case, it's the details that are key. Does everybody see the target lesions up there? Yeah, you probably do. I'll give you some arrows if you're having trouble seeing them. Uh, the target lesions are called target lesions because they look like bullseye on a target. The diagnosis, as we sort of expand our thinking, in this case from the detail, turns out to be erythema multiforme. And while we're considering other things, the expanded thinking really has to do with all the causes of erythema multiforme. In this case, commonly herpes, herpes simplex infections, but it can be caused by other infections, and it can be caused by many different uh, medications, especially um, antibiotics, but not exclusively so. Then we need to take a minute and expand our thinking with respect to anatomy, because in severe cases, and we're hoping this is not a severe case, it can affect the mucosa of the eyes, the lips, the mouth, the genitalia, or cause major sloughing of skin on large areas of the body that can lead to open sores, secondary infection, and death. Focus, expanding our thinking, and noticing details are what made the diagnosis and helped us move forward on this case. I promised you birds, and, and so we're going to see two birds of a different feather, right? Just like these birds, we have differences in skin color, hairstyle, body shapes, political affiliations. But as people said earlier today too, we can learn to see the similarities and differences at the same time. Now, raise your hand if you know the bird on the right. I expected close to 100%. How about raise your hand high if you know the bird, name of the bird on the left? Okay, a smaller number, but that, that's perfect. Now I'm going to come back to you folks in just a minute. Bird on the right, that's easy, right? It's iconic in the United States. The, the white head feathers, yellow beak, the American bald eagle, our shared national bird. Bird on the left, red-tailed hawk. Okay, so here, here's the key part. For those of you who raised your hand, the, knew the name of the bird on the left, is anyone willing to admit they didn't have it right or not quite right? Thank you very much, because this is a key part about the practice of medicine. Sometimes we don't get it right. And, and it's not even necessarily a mistake. It's part of the process of, I think this is the correct diagnosis, but as we gather more information, perhaps as we reach out to experts like we have in the room today, and they're going to tell us, hey, it's as simple as ABC, you know, you'll, you'll know it yourself next time. But for now, you admitted that and you knew it. We can't be experts in all things. So let's do something different. Let's we compare the two birds. Let's compare two areas of redness and weeping on, on the neck. There we go. You might just call it a, a, uh, a rash. Uh, but I'm seeing something a little bit different, some subtle changes. Now, in fact, it's uh, what I might call erythema and weeping and scale, perhaps, on both sides. 
Uh, but on the right side, there's a little bit more of what I call cigarette paper wrinkling, okay? The left turns out to be atopic dermatitis or eczema. On the right is cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, a cancer of the blood cells. You can't make the diagnosis if you don't consider the possibility. You and I might have to admit that there are certain things we don't know. Uh, we might have to seek out other experts. That's a hard thing. Humility, while difficult to quantify, has been written about many times as a critical factor in improving our diagnostic acumen. It's hard, finding that sweet spot between confidence and humility. That's the key. Uh, this is one of my favorite photographs of birds. I took it at the north end of Marco Island, Florida a few years ago. Uh, I love it. What does it make you think about looking at this snapshot in time? Well, for me, it reminds me about time and potential. Uh, what I see at a given moment might be different minutes, hours, days, weeks, months later. Okay. For example, a, a red spot on your arm, maybe it's just going to go away, but maybe it's going to turn into a blister, an open sore, and a painful ulcer that gets secondarily infected. Maybe the brown spot on your shoulder that I told you to watch, but you decided to ignore as it changed over the next year, is going to turn into a melanoma that will kill you. Don't let it happen, by the way. Don't do that. Okay, the other thing that this makes me think about is what's hidden. What's hidden? Is there a baby bird in that nest that I can't see? Okay, it's, uh, it's possible. Uh, is there something you're afraid to show me? You're not willing to show me. You're hiding it. You're, you're scared of what I'm going to tell you. Or is there something you are doing at work or at home that I just don't know about at this moment? So time, potential, what's hidden? I'm not sure if I told you these are ospreys, by the way. Uh, these are ospreys. Uh, so we'll go from there. So time, potential, and what's hidden? Uh, these are rough spots on the top of the hand. Uh, they are called actinic keratoses, and they are precursors to the second most common type of skin cancer called squamous cell carcinoma. So over time, they can progress to become uh, these skin cancers. Um, shape, color, timing sort of guide us at this point. But if we think about what's hidden, it's critical that we remember that this patient only wants to show me their hands but clearly they've had enough sun exposure to be at risk for skin cancers in other areas. And hopefully if they're willing me to look at more of their skin, I may find another skin cancer early enough to save their life. Remember, you cannot find what you do not look for. Okay, good. Uh, cooking is something else that really benefits from focus, expanded thinking and attention to details. Um, I, I like to cook and I like breakfast. Um, I, I like breakfast a lot. Uh, sometimes it's simple, piece of toast, some almond butter and jam. Uh, but, but other times I up my game, I scramble up some eggs, I caramelize the onions just perfectly in the, uh, in the olive oil. I shave some of my favorite uh, Gouda or cheddar cheese in there. I get the warm tortilla, it is great. For me, I wake up before my wife, so just for me. Uh, but if I'm cooking for you or someone else, I might have to adjust what I'm doing to get it just right. So I think of this as sort of the recipe. What's the recipe that you have for exceptional patient care so that you can have communication about what that patient's needs are? And so you can have communication about whether or not, gee, I've told you to do this, but gee, doc, I can't reach that spot or I can't afford it or my insurance won't let me, can you help me? So we're having a conversation about cooking at this, case, at this point. The other thing it makes me think about is we take two patients with the same diagnosis and we have to have different ways of treating them and still getting the same outcome, a really good cooked meal. So I'll give you another uh, dish with eggs. Uh, this is uh, one of the favorites in our household. Uh, I like my fried eggs a little more well done than my wife, Michelle. Uh, but we love it. We've got fried eggs, rice, cucumbers, carrots, a scallion vinaigrette. It is fantastic. We, we love it. Warm, cold, crunchy, colorful. Eating with chopsticks reminds us to, well, forces us to slow down a bit as well and reminds us of the same thing. So focusing at that moment, 
expanding our thinking to consider what's going on in, in the week, uh, perhaps noticing details uh, as we have time to talk. You know, is this the art of medicine or simply the art of being human? Okay. Different dish, uh, both with eggs. This young woman has three diagnoses. Acne, acne excoriae means she's picking at them, uh, and uh, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. And the treatment is going to, an effective treatment is going to involve medical therapy and time and explain to her and the students or residents that her issues for resolution of the post-inflammatory pigment chains, the brown spots are gonna be different as someone with darker skin. This is important because medical education is just realizing how much we've been lacking in developing competency in treating, treating and diagnosing people with skin of color. So I hope we're all part of the solution moving forward. You identify the problem and you start to work on a solution. Uh, but for anyone picking their skin, it's going to involve a level of trust. And, and for me, at least, I can't help but think about the trust involved when I cook for you. Hopefully you're trusting me or you cook for me. I'm going to trust you. So I think there, there's a piece of that. I mentioned this woman with the darker skin and, and, and I'd like you to focus on this next piece of art. Um, this is one of uh, the favorites that I've seen in the last couple of years. It was at an art gallery in Asheville, North Carolina. And I, I like it a lot. I'd like you to focus on all the women or each of them individually. Expand your thinking to think about, you know, what are they doing this day together, separately? What are they talking about? Can you notice details such as skin color, um, hairstyles, body shapes, or, or past medical history? How did that one woman lose her foot? Okay, so, but beyond the medical and dermatologic issues I can talk to you about today, I think the critical issue that this makes me think about are biases, my biases, and for you to think about your biases, because only by noticing our biases can we move toward treating each person with fairness and dignity in medicine. Okay, ABC. Um, I hope some of you will now appreciate why I'm enthusiastic about using art, bird watching, and cooking to enhance your visual and sensory skills in medicine, but if that's not your cup of tea, maybe you've got something else to shake your brain up a bit. Um, because the critical issues, of course, are focus, expanding your thinking, and noticing details. Now, I could be wrong, but I think this fits in fairly well with our theme tonight of heal ourselves, our neighbors, our friends. Well, since this is a TED Talk, though, I am going to close with me and a, good, and a picture of my good friend, Ted. He's a basic scientist up at Case Western University. We are at the Akron Art Museum in front of a painted wall of color uh, by an artist after looking at some birds, of course, in their beautiful outdoor garden, followed by a cooked meal. Thank you very much for being with me tonight. <laughs>